duty showed in the consideration of all these nominees. Honorable Speaker, the report that I tabled this morning contains all the proceedings of the committee on appointments during the approval hearings of the 20 persons who had been nominated for appointment as cabinet secretaries of the state and ministerial portfolios in the cabinet of the government of Kenya as forwarded by His Excellency the President and communicated by yourself, Honorable Speaker, on Tuesday 23rd and Wednesday 24th of July. And Honorable Speaker, the names are as read out. And Honorable Speaker, the report, Honorable Speaker, if you can protect me from the loud consultations, the report, Honorable Speaker, was saying details in great detail what we were able to engage each of the nominees on. The committee's report also has a retinue of all that was said in the committee based on what the nominees filled up in their written, handwritten questionnaire from their educational background, their professional background, places they have worked in, their work experience. And Honorable Speaker, including their net worth. And I know, Honorable Speaker, the question of net worth is what became very popular with Kenyans and especially our friends and colleagues in the fourth estate. Order, Honorable Members, order. This Kamukunji here, Honorable order. Speaker. Order, David Speaker and your team. Sioi, take your seats. Take your seats, Honorable Members. Honorable Members, if there is a motion that you require to pay attention to, order the member lecturing uh, others in the, the walkway. Members, one of the most important constitutional responsibilities you carry that was given to this House is that the president cannot sit in state house and nominate persons to office of minister or cabinet secretary without your approval. This is order, Kiborek. This is one of your most important responsibilities to discharge in this country, apart from dealing with appropriations and budget. I would expect and I expect nothing less. Order decay. I expect nothing less. And Osoro, you are the chief whip. You should be the last to cause disorder. I want you to hear each other in silence. I want us to hear your views on the people who are going to assist the president to run this country. I want the country to hear you on what you are handing over to the president to work with and we cannot do that by engaging in many kamkunjis all over the, the, the floor of the house those members, the, the chair cannot curtail you from consulting I have allowed you to use the speaker's recess room to go and consult if you wish but let's hear the moving of this motion, the debating of this motion with order, a reasonable degree of silence in the house. The country is watching you. And if the majority leader is speaking and nobody's even hearing him, then when you start to contribute, what are you going to do? Don't degenerate to a level where you know we used to have in this house. A motion as important as this is moved and a member stands up to attack his local chief instead of contributing to the motion. Majority leader, proceed. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. And Honorable Speaker was at the point I was saying that the committee considered the curriculum vitae of all these nominees that uh, stipulated where they each went to school. And Honorable Speaker, on a light note, Many people out there, including members of parliament, believed that there are some of the nominees who had not uh, attained the requisite academic qualifications. And I want to confirm to this house that indeed 
all the nominees from their curriculum vitae and engagement with the committee indicated that they had the requisite qualifications. Uh, and also noting, Honorable Speaker, that uh, our laws do not stipulate any particular quali academic qualifications. But even those that Kenyans had a very interesting engagement on, like the Honorable Ali Hassan Joho, he was able to, in a very good manner, exhibit to the country how he was inspired by Professor Ali Mazrui to pursue education having not performed well at KCSE or at high school level. And indeed, Honorable Speaker, I want to take this opportunity to commend not just Professor Ali Mazrui, but the later day Mazrui in Ali Hassan Joho, who has now also become a great inspiration to many Kenyans, Honorable Speaker. It is not every other Kenyan who sits examinations at KCSE level or at all levels and qualifies to join an institution of higher learning. But right from the example we are given of Professor Ali Mazrui to the Ali Hassan Joho of today, he's, a, he's exhibited to our young people that many of our own constituents, Honorable Speaker, a good proportion and a good percentage of our own constituents sit KCSE and do not qualify to join university. That, that does not mark the end of your life. That not qualifying to join university at Form 4 should not mark an end to your pursuit to better yourself and for academic excellence. The Honorable Ali Hassan Joho exhibited to the committee that he is now pursuing a master's degree at Harvard University in the Kennedy School of Administration. And his commendable Honorable Speaker, and I want to commend the Honorable Ali Hassan Joho for not just being nominated, but also for exhibiting to Kenyans that he can also serve as, as, an, as an inspiration to younger Kenyans who should now know that you can uh, get on a path for academic excellence, even having not performed so well at KCPE. Honorable Speaker, besides considering their CVs, the committee also invited the public to submit memoranda by way of written statements on oath or affidavits as is stipulated in our constitution and our laws, Honorable Speaker, in the Public Appointments Act on the suitability of each of the nominees. Honorable Speaker, to this end, the committee received a total of 837 memoranda. And I must thank the many Kenyans who submitted this huge number of memoranda, and it tells you that indeed public participation was not superfluous, was not for the sake of it, that Kenyans in their numbers did submit written memoranda. However, Honorable Speaker, 123 of these were hand-delivered and 714 were submitted by email. Honorable Speaker, Section 6.9 of the Public uh, Appointments Parliamentary Approval Act provides that any person may, prior to the approval hearing, by written statement on oath, provide the clerk with evidence. Honorable Speaker, out of the memoranda su submitted, 181 complied with Section 6, Subsection 9 of the Act, while 656 were not in the form of affidavits, hence did not meet the requisite threshold as per the law. Moreover, Honorable Speaker, out of the 656, some were actually in support of the nominees and therefore inadmissible because the law expects this section 6, sub article, uh, subsection 9.
and hence they could not lawfully be reappointed to cabinet. Honorable Speaker, to this end, the committee observed that, the, that Articles 132, sub Article 2, and Article 152, sub Article 2 of the Constitution of Kenya vest the power to constitute the cabinet solely on the president. The committee also observed that the nominees were not dismissed under the provisions of Article 75.2 of the Constitution and were therefore not disqualified from holding any other state office. Honorable Speaker, that point was uh, conversed in committee, and I know even in other fora outside the committee, this matter has been conversed. And it is, was the finding of the committee, Honorable Speaker, that any of the nominees who has not been dismissed pursuant to Article 75.2 is not excluded from being reappointed after dismissal by His Excellency the President, and I think that was important to be clear. To Honorable Speaker, the word dismissal is in line with the provisions of Article 152.2. And members, if you read that article, you will see that the President, the article says the President may dismiss or reassign cabinet secretaries. Therefore, there is no option under the current constitution to suspend or to ask someone to step aside. He can only dismiss you or reassign you. And when the president chose, as he stipulated under Article 132, it is prerogative to appoint and dismiss cabinet when he chose to dismiss. In the words that are stipulated in the constitution, he was well within his powers to do that, Honorable Speaker. Therefore, Honorable Speaker, there is no legal provision that bars the President from reappointing any person who has been indicted as being unfit to hold office under Article 75 of the Constitution or any relevant law. In respect of the age, Honorable Speaker, the committee observed that the nominee, the Honorable Justin Bidan Muturi, had not been dismissed as AG, but had resigned in accordance with Section 11 of the Office of the Attorney General Act in consultation with the president to give the president an opportunity to reorganize, reorganize his government as evidenced by Gazette Notice Number 8440 of 12 July 2024. Honorable Speaker, the committee also conducted background checks on the nominees by seeking ref, uh, references from the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission on Ethics and Integrity, the Higher Education Loans Board, on loan repayments for those who had gone through our public and private universities and funded from the Exchequer, the Directorate of Criminal Investigations and Criminal Records on each of the nominees, the Office of the Registrar of Political Parties, on holding office in political parties, because as honorable members do know, not a single nominee who is being nominated to serve in cabinet should be holding a political party office, and indeed, those that did hold political office, like the Honorable John Buddy, the Honorable Ali Hassan Johor, the Honorable uh, Ambeza Oparanya, had evidence that they had indeed resigned from their party positions in ODM, the oldest party in our nascent democracy, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, we also did get from KRA on tax compliance and the Commission of University Education on authenticity of academic certificates. And Honorable Speaker, it's important because I've seen many people doubting certain degrees that in each of the degrees that were submitted to the committee, the Commission for University Education ascertained that those deg degrees and degree courses that the nominees submitted before the committee are recognized in the Republic of Kenya as degrees. Honorable Speaker, in considering the suitability of nominees for appointment, the committee paid due regard to the constitutional and statutory requirements relating to the offices in question and whether the nominees' abilities, their abilities, their experience, and qualities met the needs of the said offices. Further, Honorable Speaker, the committee was guided by the constitutional and statutory requirements such as the, our national values and principles of governance, the conduct of state officers, specific qualifications for appointment as cabinet secretaries, leadership and integrity prerequisites. And Honorable Speaker, it is in this light, Honorable Speaker, that we have recommended 
having looked at the suitability of the nominees, as was assessed after scrutiny of their background, their academic credentials, as I said, their professional qualifications, their work and professional experience, their personal integrity, as well as their performance during the approval hearings, the committee observed and recommended that all the 19 nominees listed honorable speaker without having to repeat the names in the interest of time so that I allow members time, adequate time to consider all these nominees and uh, have time to debate. That honorable speaker, all the 21, sorry, including the attorney general, the former attorney general, Justin Bidan Muturi, Stella Soy, Weekly Fambeta Oparanya, Alfred Nganga Mutua, that out of the 21 nominees, honorable speaker, that were submitted to the House, and I said I don't want to read all the names because they are already there on the motion, that we consider for approval the 20 and reject the approval of only one nominee, Ms. Stella Soy Langat. Honorable Speaker, in vetting and in considering the approval of these nominees, Honorable Speaker, the 20 nominees are recommended for approval to take office if approved by this House, Honorable Speaker, because all that the Appointments Committee has done is to consider and vet them for approval of the 20 nominees and to reject the nomination of Stella Soy Langat who had been nominated for appointment to the Ministry of Gender, Culture, and Arts and Heritage. This lady, Honorable Speaker, is a career civil servant who has extensive experience in public service. However, Honorable Speaker, she did not demonstrate adequate understanding of the docket to which she had been nominated, and the committee found her unsuitable for appointment to that docket. And Honorable Speaker, I want to draw reference to members on the report on page 238, Honorable Speaker, and you will see from the observations of the committee on observation number eight on page 238, the committee did note that the nominee's experience in the public service is marked by very frequent job transitions in various roles. All the six different posts. Give the majority leader five minutes. I was winding up, Honorable Speaker. I was saying that the nominee's experience in the public service was marked by very frequent job transitions in various roles. All the six different postings that the nominee has held do not require any long-term strategic planning. As a result, she has not become grounded in any specific leadership role in the public service. And therefore, it was the feeling of the committee that if you had a nominee like this serving in a high office like that of cabinet secretary, she may not sit well to serve the public in a manner envisaged by our statutes and the expectations of the public. Two Honorable Speaker, that the nominee under nine failed to demonstrate adequate knowledge of topical administrative and technical issues touching on the Ministry of Gender, Culture and Arts and Heritage to which she had been nominated. Honorable Speaker, those who are watching, we remember a few of the unfortunate uh, mentions of uh, our Honorable Ladies without husbands and this being a gender ministry, Honorable Speaker, it was a feeling of many people across the country that uh, she may not sit well to address gender issues in that ministry. Two, Honorable Speaker, that the nominee is unsuitable for the position to which she was nominated, as she was unable to respond to satisf in a satisfactory manner to the queries raised during the approval hearing relating to gender, heritage, and culture. Honorable Speaker, I will also want to close, Honorable Speaker, by asking members that being nominated to this high office of a cabinet secretary is indeed a great honor. And Honorable Speaker, once members of the public or even members of parliament, like the Honorable Andai, Honorable Mbadi, and even the former governors who have been nominated to serve in this high office of cabinet secretary have been nominated. It is our solemn duty as members of the National Assembly to vet all these nominees, check their suitability to hold office. 
There may be a feeling, Honorable Speaker, that this or that nominee may not sit well in a certain docket. But again, in line with Article 152.2 of the Constitution, the prerogative to reassign dockets is vested on the President. And Honorable Speaker, I know there are feelings that probably this particular person, his qualifications, his experience, would sit better in another ministry than the ministry they have been nominated to. And it was our feeling, Honorable Speaker, in the Committee of Appointments, that we do leave that to the President in his own prerogative to realign and reassign dockets as time may demand and also as he may find fit in terms of where he wants to sit his nominees and his cabinet secretaries in an endeavor to deliver to the people of Kenya. Therefore, Honorable Speaker, in conclusion, on behalf of the committee, allow me to thank all the nominees for offering themselves to serve the country. And in the words of Martin Luther King Jr., who once said that life's most urgent question is what you are doing for others. As leaders, Honorable Speaker, we should always be guided by what is best for the people of Kenya. The House is mandated to either approve or reject nomination for appointment based on suitability, and the outcome can be either an approval or rejection. An approval simply signifies a committee established that a person is suitable for the office to which he has been nominated. In the same lens, Honorable Speaker, a rejection. Honorable Speaker, order members, order. Kiborek. Honorable yes. Speaker, I was saying in the same lens, a rejection only connotes a person's unsuitability to the office to which he or she is being nominated and is in no way an indictment of the capability or competence of a nominee to perform other responsibilities. I say this, Honorable Speaker, with all due respect to the nominee, Ms. Stella Soy, that her rejection is not an indictment in any way of her capability or competence to perform other responsibilities. It is only her suitability to hold the position of Cabinet Secretary for Gender. And therefore, the, His Excellency the President has a prerogative to nominate her into any other position other than that position that she had been nominated for. And the President is also has the prerogative to nominate another person from the same region, the same area, the same village. Give him uh, two minutes. I would, I, would, I would encourage the President to nominate another equally qualifying candidate from the same region, the same place, and as I said, with requisite uh, experience and qualifications to serve someone suitable to serve in that office. Honorable Speaker, with those many remarks, I now beg to move and ask all of you, Honorable Members, all of you, in one accord, to support this report where we all put in a lot of man hours up to late this morning, Honorable Speaker, when we adopted this report, having considered all the issues that came before the committee. And I am confident once approved, this new cabinet and those that will be vetting this Friday, and once we, if we adopt this report as it is, when a replacement for this lady is nominated and vetted, we will have a cabinet that, in the words of Martin Luther King, will serve the people and we look at what they can do for others, not for themselves, Honorable Speaker. I beg to move and take this opportunity to ask all of you to support this report as I request my counterpart and my good friend, the Honorable Junette Mohammed. I don't know whether he's now the minority whip or the incoming leader of minority the Honorable Junette Mohammed to second. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me opportunity. Mr. Speaker, from the onset, I stand to second the motion, Mr. Speaker, for the approval of the nominees. And Mr. Speaker, also support the motion 
Because, Mr. Speaker, this is, as you said earlier, constitutional responsibility of this House to make sure that uh, this country has a cabinet secretary, Mr. Speaker. As you are aware, Mr. Speaker, previously, before this constitution, the president used to appoint cabinet ministers as he wishes and dismiss them as he wishes, Mr. Speaker. But now, under this new constitution, there is a requirement, constitutional requirement, that any nominee that has been brought by the president must be approved by this House. And today we are here, Mr. Speaker, exercising that constitutional mandate. And that's why I want to urge my colleagues to take this matter of the approval very serious, Mr. Speaker. The confirmation of cabinet nominees, Mr. Speaker, is not just a procedural, Mr. Speaker, formality, but it's a vital process that shapes the trajectory of the governance of our country, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, 